One of these verses stands out to me is verse 23. Had they not eaten the fruit, mm -hmm. they, they would have no children, wherefore they would have remained in a state of innocence, having no joy, for they knew no misery, doing no good for they knew no sin. How do we connect that to experiencing true joy? You'll often hear people point out that if you don't know the opposite, how do you know that this is, right? How do I know what it is to feel right if I haven't felt wrong or something like that? And I think that's a very intuitive and very real experience. I'm struck, though, that the model we get within the Book of Mormon itself, and this is Alma 36, the famous telling of Alma's conversion story, at the climax of that story, he talks about how exquisite and bitter and how exquisite and sweet, right? These, these two extremes. And it's the moment he describes as the moment he comes to know. It's the moment he knows this word concerning Christ is good. This thing my father was talking about is not just talk. This is, this is the thing. And there's a certain sense in which not only do we need to know good and evil so that we know what the, we know what good is because it's the thing unlike evil we've experienced, but also it's that transition from feeling lost to feeling saved where we can say Christ, Christ is the thing. Um, and I think if we haven't felt the weight of the law to some extent, we can't feel the lightness of the Messiah. Wow. A Neil Maxwell statement was that suffering enlarges the heart. Happiness doesn't stretch us. Misery does, because it's hard to believe how much pain we can hold and go on breathing. Maybe the heart has to break in order to exactly. get bigger, right? <laughs> exactly, that's, that's what he's saying. Giving place later, Elder Maxwell says, expanded space for joy. There was a sweet story that I read when I was probably about 16 called Gentian Hell by Elizabeth Gouge. She says, sometimes fortune took it into her head to lay upon a wound a salve of such value as to make one positively glad of the wound. Now, obviously, we could amend that slightly and say with more accuracy, God has promised to the righteous that he will lay a salve upon our wounds of such value that will make us glad of our wounds. I think that juxtaposition is so beautiful. We don't know what joy is unless we know what sorrow is. Mm -hmm.